Eleanor Roosevelt, who of course was married to Flav or Flav. Yeah, boy! A brief rebound, history prefers to forget. As it clearly never happened. Anyway, she had one of the most insightful observations of the 20th century, which was, small minds discuss people, average minds discuss events, great minds discuss ideas. Oh, so true, so true. Now using this scale, where would you put people who say, tell you I'm not voting for that Bill Shorten bloke, fuck his face gives me the shit. I don't know, Gogglebox won best factual program at the Logie show, jury's still out. I mean, after Tony Abbott was dumped for Malcolm Turnbull and the polls immediately shot up for his party where they're in an election winning position and have maintained that since, despite changing nothing apart from a face. It's official. Most Australians are morons. Hoping they'll be spared the embarrassment of admitting they're stupid by quickly cobbling together some half-assed rustic wisdom, channeling their inner Hagrid by sputtering, I vote on who I think has a better character, Harry. Cause character shapes decisions. Despite even Liberal member after Liberal member telling the press publicly he's a complete and utter narcissist who will sacrifice anything and anyone to satisfy his own personal ambitions. And what better example of this than gay marriage whose legislative name is changed under his tenure to Yes yes gay marriage what kind of bigot wouldn't want that and oh it won't help me be Prime Minister? Fuck it. Originally an open and avid supporter of gay marriage criticising resolving the issue using a plebiscite as an inferior option who is now opting for the inferior option. And by inferior option, we're talking the difference between tickets to an Eminem show and tickets to Kid Rock. Because all a plebiscite is is a number which politicians look at and think. Oh, so 72% of Australians want gay marriage. But 72% of Australians aren't Corey Bernardi, who's truly one of a kind. And vote the way they want to anyway, because a plebiscite isn't binding. A plebiscite is just a very expensive opinion poll. Yet Malcolm Turnbull is willing to spend $525 million, which let's just focus on how much money that is. The ACCC, that's Australia's consumer watchdog that ensures you don't get ripped off by stores or they try and sell you dangerous products. Their budget is $132 million a year. APRA, the commission that deals with corruption in the banking industry. God knows that needs more funding when thousands of cases a year go unanswered. They only get $123 million. The funding to rural assistance, which helps farmers in times of drought, i.e. right now. They only get $205 million. The funding to natural disaster relief, $33 million. In other words, you could double the funding to these vital and severely underfunded institutions with enough money left over to build a theme park entitled Gay time, where the only thing that melts quicker than the ice cream is prejudice. But instead of just passing it like Labor and the Greens will, for free, just as democratically, because in case you haven't noticed, we don't need to go to the polls a second time, we're having an election on Saturday. In fact, less than free, as gay marriage is expected to pump hundreds of millions of dollars into the economy, and we already know exactly what a plebiscite will teach us, because in case you've never watched Sunrise or the Today Show for longer than three seconds, we already have opinion polls. 72% of Australians want gay marriage passed. Yet Malcolm Turnbull is willing to spend half a billion dollars on far-right fringe groups. Yes, far-right fringe groups, giving them hundreds of millions of Australian taxpayer dollars to print these delightfully hateful pamphlets, warning the lawn lovers of suburban Adelaide of Labor's radical gay agenda. Agenda written in rainbow, oddly, to show that even though this is a blatantly homophobic pamphlet, homophobia is sensitive to the gay community too and would like to take this opportunity to emphasise it's gay safe. Half a billion dollars for homophobic slurs. Now that's what I call strong economic management. Yet these quote-unquote grown-ups are willing to spend half a billion dollars on an opinion poll because they find the idea of two men kissing to be icky. Malcolm Turnbull knows a plebiscite's a bad idea. He said so himself. And that's what makes this so much sadder because purely to satisfy his own egoic needs. Mr Turnbull is more than willing to conjure up months of painful ridicule and mockery for the gay and lesbian community and perfectly happy wasting your tax dollars doing it, asking Australia the ugly, ugly question. Do these people really deserve to be equal? Should we perhaps instead continue to keep them a little separate? Denying them a few of the rights and privileges we enjoy, just like we used to have signs that read no Irish allowed on the lawn, or exactly like how our laws used to forbid Aboriginals from marrying white people. This isn't going to be one of those things we look back on in 20 years and think, what the hell were we thinking? Subjugating our neighbours, our friends, 
our families, to humiliating advertising campaigns designed purely to degrade their value and worth. The extreme right thinks these are all legitimate questions that belong not in a museum display about the 19th century, but displayed across our televisions and newspapers right now. To which Malcolm Turnbull said, as long as I get to be Prime Minister, fine. Power, for the sake of power, is the defining trait of a narcissist. If you vote on character, I'm not gonna try and convince you not to. I'm just asking you to follow your own damn criteria because character is forged by action and those actions speak for themselves.